gentlemen. Let's get ready to rumble! I keep it playing while some choose to play it safe. But check the resume, it's risky business in the air. Razor Ruddy almost disdaining his <laughs> The absence of the jab from Ruddy. Big right by Tyson. He's got him in trouble. Wobbled Ruddick a bit. A heavy right by Tyson stalking Ruddick. Says Bill's land. It's as if a jab didn't exist. Oh, what a right hand. Ruddick came back with a left though. Ruddick came back with a hammering punch. Another good punch by Ruddick. Oh, hard shot. There goes Ruddick again. He's down for the second time. Oh. I never saw anybody get up off the campus as well as Razor Ruddick does. He keeps getting up off again. There goes the mouthpiece. It's only the fourth round. Oh, tremendous uppercut by Donovan. And back comes Tyson with a vicious uppercut. Oh, nice uppercut. Two nice uppercuts by Razor Running. Running landing with the right. But again, here comes Tyson. Best punches of, the, of this round. Oh, nice. Good left by Ruddick. Oh, nice shot by Rudder. This is heavyweight action at his best. Oh, Tyson just got hammered and he comes back fighting. What an exchange. Oh, oh, what a low blow. And then run again with the low blow. It's the bell sound. They both hit each other low blows. And, and, and the bell sounded like saying, hey, this is no day at the beach. You're getting much as you're giving me. Drink Hennessy with no chases. Right hook is like Joe Frazier's. I'm the boat they shit. Uh -huh. Right past the biggest fire in Britain this year without any shadow of a doubt. Heavyweights with a history. Both can fight. He and Joshua are on collision course. Dylan White beat Anthony Joshua in the amateur ranks. Forget boxing. I don't like this guy. Who's Dylan White to me? Nobody. Nobody. What can you say about Anthony Joshua? Absolutely breathtaking stuff. I'll fight anybody in the ring. I don't scare of nobody. That is what the boss is about. it up straight back in front of him did you see that of course he's still very young himself in the pro game here comes joshua again Absolutely. big big right hand and he does connect yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got wait, because it's obviously the round but he oh, got got him. finally got him is this the breakthrough white looking to hold on which he is doing Foster but look at the legs 
There's a grin from White, but the legs are betraying him, and down he goes. He's hurt. Surely, surely, down. surely no way up here for Dylan White. It's stopped. It's over. Dramatic and unbelievable at the finish. Joshua asked a lot of questions tonight. Came up with the answer when it mattered. By the punch with the goal repeatedly in the dick Then when he fought Mike Tyson he bitched out and quit Brazil coming off a loss to Anthony Joshua, where he was very game, but he was really outclassed. Coach sold him like he's the best thing. He calls him the uh, sleeper on the heavyweight division, and he's proving that right now. He's uh, connecting really well. 243, and today 263. Good body shots in the game. And he knows he's in with a live body here. Gono, back to the body again in his home country. Again, he obviously is unique. Goes to the body again and then. Ooh, a good right hand by Ugona. Oh, and then he goes. Yes, but he's also, he's also showing the inexperience. He should be holding, but he hurt. Big right hand, Ugona, and then goes to the body. Heads, I guess. He slowed things out. Big right hand. Came right off the shoulder and again. Ugona measuring his man after being drilled. That's Brazil in trouble. So both men are tired. It's going to be a Ooh. Ooh. Big right Ooh. hand. Brazil's hurt. Ooh. Ooh. Brazil's hurt. Dotson starts the count as he should. He should have finished that job. Big right hand. Oh, oh I think big right hand dominated. Right 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 and now he comes to the That was a tremendous right hand by Dominic Brazil. He came back to the head after a stomach shot. He Ugono, needs to finish him now. He's on weary legs. He's hurt. It's over. Ugono falls out of the ring, partially from exhaustion. And that's real of real deal, holy feel. And that you hook us and hoes know how I feel. As heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield prepared to meet Riddick Bowe in 1992, he was regarded as an undersized overachiever. As a light heavyweight in the 1984 Olympics, he suffered a controversial disqualification. As a pro, he won the 190 pound title which had little public appeal. Though lacking the natural size of a heavyweight, Holyfield set his mind to conquering that division as well. 
My coach told me at eight years old that I could be the heavyweight champ of the world. I hadn't reached a goal. If I would have just stayed the junior heavyweight champ of the world, been undefeated and retired. He had the skills and smarts, but what made him special was his belief that he could break his opponent's will, no matter his size. I chose to be insecure about what I thought the people would say. I wanted to prove to the guy, you know, you hurt me, I'm gonna hurt you back. Holyfield always talked about how he would box, and then of course he would get hit, and he would start a brawl, and that was his nature. The bigger his opponents, the bigger his will seemed to grow. There was a, a moment in the Holyfield Foreman fight. Another left hook, and a right. When Evander went after George and landed 18, 19 punches in a row, he just wasn't going to take no for an answer. There were questions about Bo's qualifications. The knock on him was that he was lazy. There were rumors all the time. He had to be barred from going to the kitchen during training. It was difficult to get him to get up and do his road work. I was with Reddick when he was an amateur, and uh, we had a lot of fun, but he never showed the drive to be a champion. Louis brought him in as a sparring partner for Tyrell Biggs. Tyrell was beating the living shit out of him every day, primarily because he was just going through the motions. But no one questioned Bo's pure talent for fighting. We knew that he had the size, we knew he had the speed, we knew he had the strength and the talent. What we didn't know was whether if, when the going got tough, whether he was gonna be able to step it up. As he showed against trial horses Pierre Coetzer and Bigfoot Martin, Bo was not the usual plotting giant. Taking on Holyfield for the title, however, would require a new level of commitment. He was the guy that I boxed when I was an amateur, he was a professional. But I knew that from his attitude and his makeup, when your father got like Evander Holyfield, I mean, I'm gonna tell you, Evander comes to get it. So I never underestimated him. You never saw a more focused, more serious Riddick Bell. It was perhaps the best training camp that we've ever had. Bo was ready to fight for the title. A crowd of 18,000 awaits the fourth title defense for Evander Holyfield, a defense which now becomes the biggest test for respect in his two-year reign as champion. On November 13, 1992, the challenger appeared ready, but few anticipated the ferocious encounter we'd see that night. Holyfield, the heavyweight champion, giving up 30 pounds to the title challenger. Playing early here in this heavyweight title fight. There's a combination from Holyfield, and then Bo responds, digging a right hand to the body, and a good exchange. Very, very competitive, high energy first round. Right hand from Holyfield. So Bo can think that, uh, that, he's, that he's running the show. Look at this. Back and forth they go, trading toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Round three, undisputed heavyweight title on the line here in Vegas. Both men undefeated. Both men feel they have reached the prime of their career. Sticking him with a telephone pole jab. Holyfield just missed with the right hand. Bo came right back, and then they trade again. Good, good stuff between these unbeaten heavyweights. Round by round, the excitement was building, but it was the 10th round which took the fight into the stratosphere. Bo stuns him with an uppercut, and just like that, the champion struggles to stay on his feet. What a hard fight, Holyfield. He's gonna stay on his feet. He's hanging in there. He hit me with an uppercut. Oh, it's a, a shot. Oh, you know, all of a sudden, you know, I know that I'm hit. Now I go on defense, and he's swinging for life. Gets away from the right hand, blocks another one. Riddick laid so much punishment on Evander in the first minute and a half of the round that it was pretty hard to fathom how Evander was standing up. Joe Cortez watching. Champion gets the benefit of the doubt. It was just a matter of him getting hit one more devastating blow before I would have stopped it. However, Holyfield has been known to get staggered and come back. If you can feel the pain, then you're still in the game. It's when you don't feel the pain, you're out. This damn pit bull from Georgia would not go down. Evander Holyfield's incredible powers of recovery once again on display. And all of a sudden, the storm got quiet. Uh-oh now. 
Oh boy, I'm going to hurt you. All of a sudden, he had Riddick on the run. And for the last 30 seconds of the round, you're wondering how Riddick is going to finish. Look at Holyfield. What a warrior. Reversing the tide of the battle. The champion now has bow wobbling. And he lands a right hand. Everybody in the Thomas and Max Center on their feet. A right hand by Holyfield. And another. Round 10 continues after the bell. And when the bell rung, I said, man, I just had 10 more seconds. Now, now in the whole fight, now that's the only round that I was wishing that it could have been a little bit more time. I said to myself, this cat here, you all right. I was impressed with him, you know. Pat him on the stomach at the end of the round. I mean, that's a good round, you know. They both survived the storm, but it took more out of Holyfield than Bo. Holyfield was floored in the 11th. Again, Holyfield proved his resilience. The champion entered the 12th, needing a knockout to retain the title. It was not to be. From the back of the arena now, they begin to rise and applaud what has been an extraordinary battle between two men of heart and will and courage and skill. It could have been one of those old fights that went 20, 30 rounds. The bell rang to end the 12th round, and it was like, you know, they were saying, 12 rounds isn't enough. We need to go until somebody can't go anymore. And new heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick. And they were devastating to me. Did he win? Oh, yeah, 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 he, he won. And he won it the right way. He took the fight. Riddick Bowe emphatically answered any doubts about his resolve. His heart had always been questioned. And I felt like, God damn it, question this. Look at this man. Look at this athlete. Look at this competitor. And Holyfield's valor showed that a heavyweight champion could be measured by qualities other than power. There is no doubt whatsoever that the 10th round completely won over all the skeptics for Holyfield.